Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to TMX Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan, for those of you who don't know me. And today I'm doing something a little different. Um, I did try and come live to you earlier and show you how to make an amazing chocolate caramel sauce and it didn't work properly. So, this is the caramel chocolate bourbon sauce. Didn't use bourbon, use scotch. Uh, amazing. Give it a go and I reckon if you don't do bourbon um, you could do vanilla you could do salt there's lots of different things but what I want to take you through this today is actually how to make vinegar we don't need a thermomix for this this is a anybody can make recipe um, been doing a lot of research lately about how to do things ourselves you know we're really on a bit of a journey at the moment about growing our own food and being less dependent on shop food and that sort of stuff and it's got me down the track at the moment of things like vinegars. Now we've reignited uh, our uh, kombucha, which has been a little while since we've done. The kids are super excited about that. Does anyone else out there today uh, watching along, do any of you make kombucha? Have you tried it? Uh, it's awesome once you get it going. It's just one of those things that can just get sit there, sit there and be fed. I always let mine die between children. I always said when I had my babies that couldn't keep everything alive in one go. And so it would die and then we'd re-bring re it back to life once the kids were old enough and I didn't have all that newborn baby on my hands. But vinegar today. So vinegar is actually a bit like wine in some regards. It has a fruit component, which has sugars and things like that. And it has a water component. And then it needs the air, it needs oxygen for about 30 days to vinegar up. Now you can do what I understand with Fresh. However, fresh fruit is harder to vinegarize because it often leads itself to getting mold on top. Whereas your good old uh, dried fruit, I've got uh, raisins in here, sultanas, uh, have far better outcomes more consistently. So that's what I'm showing you today. If you are on today, do say hello. I'd love to know if you're watching. Hey, Denise, lovely to have you on this afternoon. Um, so really simple vinegar it's going to take 30 days though so i'm going to come back in 30 days and tell you how it's going i'll actually occasionally drop it into the live videos about what the update on it but pretty much a quarter nothing scientific about that about a quarter of a clean jar worth of um, dried fruit and then water now preferably filtered water but work with what you've got if you don't have it you don't have it okay don't go out and buy bottled water and then you've got a plastic bottle to deal with don't do that Turn on the tap if you need to, okay? And all we're gonna do is we're literally gonna top it with water. So it's not hot water, it is straight room temperature water. We do need space at the top because this is going to get bubbly and frothy. That's probably not as much as I want. I've got another container up here. I knew that that would fit in there. Nope, that one's got floaties. I'm not gonna use that one. You'll just have to pretend this is filled up a bit further. I will come. And uh, hey Sharon, hey Diane, hey Pamela, no sound. That's unusual. All right, let's see if anyone else has no sound. Let me know if you're having sound issues. Um, look, my internet is poor. That's actually half the reason why these days I do do the YouTubes and then I share them over to the page because I can pre-record the YouTubes and upload them. And then I don't have to worry if my internet's unstable. Thank you, Monica, for saying you can hear me. Fingers crossed, Pamela, that uh, it comes good for you. But yeah, we have really un unstable internet. So that's a lot of the reason that I don't get to come live as often as I'd like to anymore. So I am still putting up videos though. Nelly Daily, this week has been, and last week, a little bit chaotic. So I do apologize. I didn't get up videos Thursday, Friday last week. And I think I skipped Wednesday, Thursday this week just because family. <laughs> it's just been a little crazy. Uh, but once I get this rhythm back into it, it will be um, there'll be five days a week of videos, predominantly on YouTube where I share into Facebook. So keep an eye out. And, and the thing is as well, it means that if you know if you're not on live when I am, they're still there for you to watch. So do keep an eye out. If you're not on YouTube, jump over there and subscribe. It also means you'll get an email saying, "Hey, I've put a new video up," and then you you've got that email to remind you that it's there. Hey, Julie, lovely to have you on. So now what we need to do, back to vinegar. I would need to put a little bit of water in, okay, a little bit more water, that's not enough, but I don't have any in the room with me here. All we then need to do is literally cover it. And you wanna cover it with something that can let the air in, but keep the bugs out, keep the dust out. So 
what you're going to find is if you put nothing on it, you're going to end up with a film on top that grows mold. It's the perfect mold environment because we are fermenting in there. That's what we're doing to vinegarize it. We're actually fermenting it. Um, if you have a lid on it tight, you're not going to get vinegar in there at all because it does need the exchange of oxygen. So you might put a coffee filter on top. I've got a paper towel. like, But also you could put a, an old chucks cloth or a new chucks cloth. They work brilliantly as well. And an elastic band or a hairband. I'd have one of those except the six-year-old acquired my one off the table before I came live. So I have to chase it down. So... Um, then all we need to do is we literally just need to leave it where it is and stir it every couple of days. Now, if you forget to stir it, it's really forgiving. It's not going to be a problem. If you've left it for a week and you didn't stir it, it'll be fine. Okay, it's not going to break. If you do see mold growing, you can actually fish it off, believe it or not. When it comes to uh, fermenting, you know, sourdoughs and even our sauerkraut, as long as it's not what I call an angry mold. Now, an angry mold is a gray mold. It is, you'll see there's a difference. You'll get sometimes a film on top, and that's that reminds me of, when I say plastic on top is what it reminds me of. It's not plastic, but that's what it reminds me of. That's fine. You could either leave it. Actually, you know what? It's waxy. That's how I pre, that's how I would call that. It's like a fermenting mold, and it's a, like a waxy top. You just fish it off. But angry mold is that gray stuff. It's prolific. It starts coming up the sides of your jar. You have to start again if that's the case. This has to get watered down, tipped on your garden, and you start again. But if it's just the waxy looking stuff, you can just fish that off uh, before you give it a stir every couple of days. Now you want to taste it. In about two weeks time, we're going to be back online and we're going to have a taste. And it's going to start to be vinegary. It's going to start smelling vinegary and it's going to start tasting vinegary. In about a week's time after that, it's usually, depending on the weather, because obviously if you're cold, it ferments slower than if it's summer and warm. But about that 20, 21 day mark, it should be quite vinegary. And at that point in time, we strain it, we put the lid on, label it and put it aside or use it. Now, it's a bit like wine though. As it ages, it gets better. So you can actually then have it jarred up, leave it on a shelf and literally let it age, which it'll just keep getting taste, tasting better and better. Then once you've got vinegar, you can use it in things like your mayonnaise, you can use it in stir fries, you can use it in sauces, dressings, anything that calls for vinegar, you've then got it. And you can do this with any dried fruit. You can do it with fresh fruit, as I may mention, it's just a bit trickier. So I would say dried. Stick with dried for your first couple of experiences. Use what you've got. For us, it was the sultanas or raisins, whatever they're called, those little tiny ones. Uh, so, you know, use what you've got and each dried fruit will throw a little bit of a different flavor. So you could literally have dried strawberries, dried blueberries, uh, raisins, dried apricots. You could have your different vinegars that have that, just that little bit of an undertone of that flavor left at the end. Because by the time it vinegars, you'll still have a tiny undertone left of whatever that was, which makes it beautiful when you want to use it in something like a dressing. So... Give this a go. Hey Sue, lovely to have you on this afternoon. Give making your own vinegar a go. Start it today. I bet you you've all got sultanas in your cupboard. Put some in the bottom of a jar, cover them with water, leave about an inch, two centimeters headroom, okay? Um, in the top, put them on, put something on top to keep the dust and the bugs out, the oxygen able to come and go. And then join me in two to three weeks time as we taste this and then we start using it in our cooking. So, hope you've learned something today. I, I know I was super excited when I learned that I can make my own vinegar. I love the fact that, I guess having a Thermomix gives me the confidence to be able to start looking outside the box and not necessarily just picking up off the supermarket shelf every time. And I really do hope that I can, I guess, uh, support you and help you build that confidence as well so that it, similarly you can go, oh, you know what, I'm gonna make vinegar I know it's a long-term project, I get that, <laughs> but you know, have a go at making it so that it's something that you are just confident at then. And you can go, you know what? I can make my own vinegar. So I hope you do take away those skills and keep getting more and more out of your family mix as well. But anyway, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for coming on and saying hi, those of you who've had a chance to. Those of you watching replays, hashtag replays. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next week. Next week, we're doing favorites from our childhood.
So I'm excited next week to bring you some absolute classic childhood memory food. So um, going down memory lane to do food that reminds us of our childhood. So thank you to those of you who are in my customer support group who have given me some ideas to work with there as well. So I'm excited next week to share that with you guys. Hopefully next week I get a bit more of a rhythm going and um, I won't skip any days. And hopefully technology agrees with me so that I don't have to just show you the final product of the amazing sauce, but I can show you the process as well. So, hey, Lynn, lovely to have you on this afternoon as well. But otherwise, take care. Have a fantastic weekend. Go cook people food with your Thermomix. Show them how easy life can be with a Thermomix on their bench. And when they're ready to get one, I would love to support them to get one on the bench and then, of course, get more and more out of it. But take care and thanks for joining this afternoon. And I will see you next week. Bye for now, guys.